Welcome to our tutorial on how to migrate Google Workspace account to Microsoft Office 365. First, you'll need to create a project in Google Cloud and generate credentials for login. Then, enable the necessary APIs and add scopes. To do that, visit console.cloud.google.com and log into the Google Cloud console. After logging in, follow these steps. Navigate to the top left corner and click on the drop down menu button. Select I am and admin and then click on the create project option. Now, you'll see the new project settings section. First, provide a name for your project. The organization and location are automatically selected by default, but if not, select your organization name and location. Note. Organization and company will be your company domain name. After configuring the project settings, click on the Create button. We've successfully created the project. Next, we need to set up API and services and credentials. To do this, once again, go to the top left corner and click on the drop down menu button. This time, select API and services and then click on Credentials. Click on Create Credentials, then choose Service Account. Provide a name for the service account. The service account ID will be generated based on this name. Click on Create and Continue. Now, click on Select a Role, choose Owner and then click on Continue. Once completed, click Done. This is the service account we've just created. To obtain the service account ID, click on the pin icon next to the service account. This is the service ID, also referred to as the unique ID which should be copied and saved into your notepad. Now, let's create the P12 key. Navigate to the Keys section in the Navigation panel. Click on Add Keys, then select Create New Key. Choose the second option, P12, and click on Create. Once done, the P12 key will be downloaded automatically. This is the password for the P12 key to access it. Also, copy this password and save it in your notepad. Now, click on Close to exit. Now, we need to enable the API in the Google Cloud Console. Once again, go to the top left corner, click on the drop-down menu button, and select APIs and Services. Then, click on Library. In the Search panel, type Admin SDK API. Select the Admin SDK API and click on the Enable button. It's already enabled in my account, so it displays Manage. Now, go back and type Gmail API. Select the Gmail API and click on Enable. It's also already enabled. Again, go back and type Google Calendar. Click on the Google Calendar API and enable it. Go back once more, type Google People API. and click on the Google People API. Then, click on Enable. All APIs have been enabled. Now, we need to add scopes. Go back. Click on the drop-down menu button and select I am Admin, then choose Service Accounts. Click on the service account you've just created. Next, click on the Advanced option to reveal additional settings. 
Under Domain-wide delegation, select View Google Workspace Admin Console, which will redirect you to admin.google.com. Now, log into the Google Workspace Admin Console using the administrator credentials. After logging in, navigate to the left panel and select Security, then Access and Data Control, and finally API Controls. On the right side, select Manage Domain-Wide Delegation. At the top, click on Add New. In the Client ID field, paste your unique ID, also known as the Service ID, that we have just created. For the OAuth scopes, copy all scopes, which can be found in the description, and paste them into the OAuth scopes field, separated by commas. Now, click on Authorize. Now, we have successfully created the service ID, downloaded the P12 key, and configured the APIs with appropriate scopes. Now you have to download and install the Gmail Backup Wizard software on your system. You can find the download link in the description. Once downloaded, launch the software on your system. This is the interface of the Gmail Backup Wizard software. The initial option in the navigation panel is Select Email Source. To initiate backup for your Google Workspace account, select the option labeled I am Admin. Now enter your Google Workspace credentials, starting with your email address. Here paste the unique ID that we generated through Google account. For the certificate file path, choose the P12 file that was also generated and downloaded through the Google account. Click on the folder icon to browse to the destination path where your P12 file is located. Select your P12 file and click Open. After inputting your Google Workspace credentials, proceed by clicking on the Login button. Here, you can individually choose user accounts. Or, to select all users' accounts at once, click on the top checkbox next to the Select All Users. Enabling the Enumerate User Subfolder option will display account folders like Sent, Inbox, Drafts, and others. Proceed by clicking on the Next button. Now, we are in the Backup Settings section. On the left side, you'll find a list of all user accounts along with their subfolders, created using the Enumerate User Subfolder option. Users can either select individual user accounts and their folders or simply click on the top checkbox to select all user accounts and their respective folders. On the right side, the first option is the Select Saving option, providing users with a range of file formats for backup or migration including PST, Inbox, EML, PDF, Thunderbird, Outlook.com, Gmail, and others. For this tutorial, let's proceed with Microsoft Office 365. Under Save Messages and Default Folder, files will be migrated to the same folders in Microsoft Office 365. Selecting I am Admin confirms to the software that the admin is handling the migration. In the change language setting, if the source mailbox is in English and the destination is in Spanish, then the user needs to select Spanish in the change language option so that folder mapping will be done correctly. Change language will not change the language of the mailbox. It is only for mapping purpose. 4. Office 365 Email Users need to input their admin Microsoft Office 365 email address. The Export to Primary Mailbox option will export files to the primary folder in Microsoft Office 365, while Export to InPlace Archive Mailbox will export all files to the Archive Mailbox folder. Let's also explore the filter options. Click on the filter option located in the navigation panel. Click on the checkbox to reveal the filter options. The first filter is the Date Range filter allowing users to specify a date range to filter emails within selected years. 
In the forum, filter users can input the receiver's name to back up only those emails that received from that particular recipient. Alternatively, using the TO, filter users can input the sender's name to exclusively back up only emails sent to that specific sender. The subject filter allows users to input specific subject details to exclusively back up only those emails that contain the particular subject. The fifth option is exclude folders, where users can specify folder names to exclude them from the process. For example, typing sent and inbox will exclude these folders from the process. And has the words filter, users can input any word such as an email address. This will result in exporting only those emails containing that specific word. In the Exclude Attachment option, files with attachments will not be included. In the Concurrent Users Data Copying option, users can export up to a maximum of five user accounts simultaneously. Afterward, it will export another set of five user accounts, and so forth. Additionally, users have the option to specify the number of users to be exported together. In Incremental Backup, Activating this feature allows the software to resume the process from where it left off in case of an unexpected shutdown or power failure during conversion. Now, let's also explore the selective export settings for email folders filter. The first filter, only export sent folder, will back up only the send folder and exclude other folders from the process. The second filter, exclude exporting email, body content, and attachments, will back up only email headers such as subject date from sender, etc. Additionally, there's a request for more features option where users can submit requests for additional feature installations or even suggest customized software. Also, the tool offers the Delta migration feature, enabling users to migrate new emails to the destination. It skips already migrated data and processes only new items. If you rerun the migration after completing it, the tool will resume from the last email that was migrated. Let's deselect this filter option and return to the backup window panel. With all settings configured, it's time to initiate the conversion process. Simply click on the backup button and the Gmail backup wizard software will proceed to backup your files. Now, Input your Microsoft Office 365 admin email address and password. Then proceed to sign in. This is the Exchange Admin Users Impersonation setting panel. Here, you'll need to specify which user account's backup needs to be transferred to which other user account. Let's choose and specify user accounts. For the first user account, Choose an Office 365 user account to which files need to be transferred. Click on Select to add a user account. Then choose the user account from which files need to be transferred. Repeat this process for the second and third user accounts and continue accordingly. After specifying all user accounts, it's time to initiate the conversion process. Simply click on the Convert button and the Gmail Backup Wizard software will proceed to backup your files to your Microsoft Office 365 account. The Username column indicates the number of user accounts migrating. Next, the folder names signify the folders being migrated. Following that, Messages Saved indicates the number of successfully migrated folders, while Total Messages Failed reveals the count of folders that failed to migrate. This is particularly useful for identifying any issues, such as corrupted files, during the migration process. Once the conversion is complete, you'll receive a notification box indicating the process was successful. Click on OK. In the trial version, you can export only 25 emails. To increase the limit, you have to purchase the license. By clicking OK, we'll display the backup report. These are the report files, and this will be the name of the folder where your files are exported in the Microsoft 365 account. To view the backup files, you need to access your Microsoft Office 365 account. Open your web browser and navigate to office.com 
then click on Sign In with your Microsoft Office 365 account. After login, navigate to Outlook and select it. Scroll down to locate the folder. Here it is. Once you find the folder, open it and check your files. And there you have it. That's how to take the backup of a Google Workspace account to Microsoft Office 365. Thanks for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more helpful tips and tutorials. For more details, check the description.